Hey guys, I have a very exciting video for you today. Probably my most favorite video that I've made so far. I am so excited to introduce you to the first ever Organized Advisor Planner. We are going to do a walkthrough so you can see everything that's inside. It has been so exciting um, putting this together for you. I have always wanted to create a planner. I have been a crazy planner lady since I was in elementary school. And so creating a planner for your book advisors uh, has just been a dream come true, to be honest with you. And seeing those that pre-ordered open them, get them in the mail, unbox them, and start to use them has been such a special experience. And so I just wanted to walk you through and tell you what's inside if you didn't pre-order. Um, I do have a couple of copies actually left over because I got some overruns and so I have them available um, but just a few so if you are interested you can get that at organizedadvisor.com slash planner. The digital version is also available and you can use that on your iPad or you can just print it out and use it with your staff or for yourself um, in your classroom. So this is the planner itself. She is beautiful. Um, the A couple of other accessories that you have the option of getting. This is a little pen loop that you can stick in the back here and always keep a pen handy with you. You can't really see it with my new wall color. I just painted it. It's Organized Advisor Blue. And then there are also some sticker sheets that you can grab. Um, they have all advisor-friendly uh, activities such as last day to buy an ad, final quantity, cover due, price increase, distribution day, banquet day, um, as well as some blank ones. So no need to wait any longer. Let's dive in and take a look. We'll go ahead and get started with the cover. You'll notice that it kind of has like a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, this is called a silk touch finish, which is um, just kind of sort of meant to mimic like a faux leather sort of feel, but it's really durable. So you can wipe it off if it gets a fingerprint on it, that kind of thing. Um, there's also a elastic band that kind of keeps everything held together. If you have papers you've stuck in here or your stickers or notes or anything, this kind of keeps it all together. There's also a ribbon bookmark, which helps keep your place because the first 100 25 pages or so are what I call like the organized advisor survival guide. Originally I was a little bit worried about how thick it was going to be because of that beginning section but honestly I don't think it's too bad or too heavy. Um, it's about, well I did measure it with a pica ruler and it's five picas wide and so if you're curious about how big it is um, you know I don't think that it's too thick um, especially compared to other planners that I've seen out there. Okay so let's crack it open. So first we have just the end sheet. Um, it's just navy paper. I have used silver sharpies and silver and gold gel pens on here and it shows up really beautifully so you could doodle on here if you wanted to. Then we have your like um, if lost please return to kind of plaque. Um, if you have put a ton of information in here and time into planning you definitely want to get this returned so be sure to fill that out. Then I have a little bit of an explanation about how the planner came to be and my kind of philosophy behind it and why it was such a labor of love for me to put together and such an honor to be able to do so for the community of advisors that I personally love so much, having been a former advisor and knowing firsthand how important it is to plan ahead and be on top of stuff like the many, many deadlines that we, we do have. Um, then we have a first week checklist, and so this uh, I always made myself in the beginning of the year just on a piece of regular like notebook paper, and so this I thought was helpful to have all, all in one place. Um, but it has a list for general to-dos because the beginning of the year is always just crazy. What things you might need to bring from home or from various places that you need to bring into your classroom things you need to print out like your staff manual and your syllabus, things you might need to turn in like your mandatory training certificates or your subfolder, and then things you might need to laminate. Then we go right into our staff manual. So this isn't actually a usable staff manual, it's more so of a checklist, but if you go on the website and you search staff manual, there's a bunch of downloads that you can grab this information and uh, edit it for your own staff, but this will give you a starting point of things you might want to consider adding to your staff manual, as well as adding some like production guides for your staff so they know what the expectations are. It's kind of a refresher for how to write a news article, how to write a caption. Um, those are really helpful to have in your staff manual because it kind of puts all of the uh, pertinent information they need to know as far as like their grades, their expectations for behavior, for equipment, as well as like this is what you need to know. So I kind of like putting those together in one place. 
Then we have our, uh, what I call the start strong section. So if you're a brand new advisor, you know, these are some questions that you can run through with your principal. You can get all the social media logins and the handles and make sure you have access to all of them. Even if they're student run, you want to make sure you have access to them just in case something happens and you need to intervene quickly. Um, but a couple of questions that you, you can ask your principal or your team about you know the student staff that was coming from last year and then the equipment that you have available. There's also a spot to put your editors and their positions. Obviously you're going to know this but this can be really helpful for a substitute that comes in. This might be on your desk and you can refer to it. You can put a sticky note here and you know alert them to this page so they know who the student leaders are in your group um, and you know it's just good to have as reference. Then you have um, a goal setting worksheet. I am really, really big into setting goals. I think that it's really important and I think if you are striving to do better each and every year but you don't set goals, you're kind of striving towards nothing. And so adding you know, a space for where you can talk about what went really well last year and what was an area that you could improve was really important. Um, and you'll notice that there's a place down here for personal goals because I think it's also really important that we don't just focus on you as an advisor who is a teacher or a you know really busy person but you're a person um, and so making sure that we you know cater and serve you as a person is just as important as we serve you as a teacher uh, then we have our annual planning calendar and so here I would write things like homecoming SAT test um, when there might be a school holiday uh, prom you know this is where you're going to write down all the things from the campus calendar the district calendar uh, general holidays staff birthdays th that kind of stuff there is another spot in here that you can also write staff birthdays separately but sometimes I like to have it in both places because I like to have kind of an overview of everything and then break it down by birthdays somewhere else then we have the first of a page that is repeated several times throughout the book and in each section. So this is just a place for meeting notes. And so each page has a place for you to put the topic of the meeting and the date, the agenda, meeting notes, and then action items. So this is intended to be a form for you to use anytime that you meet with the principal or you meet with your staff members or you meet with a vendor. It just gives you a place to kind of jot down things that you want to talk to them about. Um, I know that I always had like a scheduled meeting on the books like a month in advance with my rep and I would always forget things that I needed to talk to her about and so this gives you a place to kind of write down what those questions or those things are that you need and then when you have the meeting you can refer back to it. There's four of those in this section and then it's followed by a blank lined paper which is really helpful because if you're having a meeting that runs a little longer than we'd like um, this might not be enough space and so you can follow that up with more notes right behind it. Behind those line pages, there's quite a few of them. One of our biggest um, pieces of recommendations when we took the when we put up the survey was that there's never enough writing space for notes inside the planner, and so we were really diligent about adding lots and lots of pages for notes, just plain notes, um, as often as we could. This one's a little hard to see on camera, but it's actually a dot grid, but it's really light, and so you can use it as a blank page for doodling or sketching or drawing anything you need to, or you can use the, um, the dot grid in order to draw some layouts or anything you might need to have um, more straight lines. There's a couple of those pages. Then we have our first kind of division section going into the next page, but I didn't want to leave these division pages just empty real estate. And one of the other pieces of feedback we got is that people wanted um, a place to de-stress, somehow to be creative, um, and we put in a couple of coloring pages for that a specific reason. So not only are they coloring pages, but they're also motivational. So don't stop until you're proud is one of my favorite phrases. And so we threw that in there um, all through each section as well as at the back. So you can have a little creative break and kind of de-stress through a stressful deadline. Or you can photocopy these and give them to your students as well. All right, so going into the section about people. So this is where you put your actual publication staff contact info. So we have a spot for their first and last name, their phone number and their email. Obviously you're going to have all of this digitally, but digital things fail sometimes. Sometimes you just need to look it up quickly. If the internet is out, you need to be able to have their contact info right at your fingertips. And so I was always really diligent about writing all of this info at the beginning of the year. So you have it to refer to just in case because things happen. Um, and then, 
We also have a spot for their parent name, their phone number, and then also the student's candy, favorite candy, favorite drink, and shirt size. I was always referring back to this because I, you know, for their birthday or for some sort of special event or celebration, we'd always be looking for their favorite whatever. And then um, also their shirt size, we always would use that for whatever um, our staff shirts were. And then we would do several throughout the year for different big events or deadlines or promotions. And so it's helpful to have all of that right there. All right, then next in the pupil section, we have our vendor contact info. So this is a place to put your yearbook, photography, newspaper, online news, and a blank one uh, for any vendors that you might work with on a regular basis. Again, I know you're going to have this digitally. That's perfect and great, and you should have it digitally, but technology fails, and it's always good to have their contact info at your fingertips, whether you're at home or you're at school or you're, you know, internet goes out at school, you have it right there. All right, next is our faculty and staff contact information. And so I've given you a couple of prompts here, uh, like the principal, the assistant principal, the department heads, all the core subjects, fine arts, athletic director, counselor, and front office secretary. These are people that I think you should know, but I realize that not every school even has athletics. And so feel free to cross those out or wipe them out and swap them with whoever is most helpful to you. But this is really good to have on hand so you know, because sometimes this personnel changes, you need, you you know for this year their first name, last name, their email address, their phone number or extension to their classroom, as well as their off period, so when you can expect to contact them. I think it's really important that at the beginning of the year you develop relationships with these people intentionally because, for instance, the science department head, they're going to know the schedule for all the science classes and they can come to you with a calendar or with dates and get your students there to take pictures of the science projects or the science fair. Um, proactively instead of reactively or you just emailing them randomly out of the blue and saying, hey, I'm the yearbook advisor, when are your next science projects, that you've already developed a relationship and set expectations with them. So these are really important people, I think, to build relationships with at the beginning um, and always good to have their contact info on hand for yourself and for your students. All right, so then I mentioned this earlier, but this is the birthday calendar. It looks really similar to the annual planning calendar, but basically it just gives you a date and then a place to put their name. I always gave this to my editors once it was filled out, so that way they were able to celebrate. We had bigs and littles, and so the bigs were the editors and the littles were the staff members, and so they would always celebrate their littles staff, uh, little staff members' birthdays uh, when it came time. All right, next we have the teaching section. So these are all things that are kind of reference materials just related to you as a teacher, not necessarily specific to advising publications. So simple things like a password tracker. Hopefully you do not have to remember this many passwords, uh, but just in case you do, you have a spot to put them. I highly recommend using a app called LastPass. I use it exclusively all day every day. It puts all of this information into one app and it is synced across all my devices and it tracks if I, my password changes, it updates everywhere. And so that's super, super helpful. But again, just in case that fails, I always like to have a hard copy written down. But just in case you leave this out on your desk or it's anywhere where you know someone that might not need these need to see these passwords um, is can see this, make sure that you kind of like use discretion with what you put and write down in here. All right, then we have uh, two separate pages here. We have our professional development log, so you can track all the PD hours, the activity, and the uh, date that you took the PD. Uh, this is just really helpful when you come to renew your certificate. It's all one place from the year. You do need to probably keep the certificates as well from each event, but just so you know, you have a record here and you can keep track of how many hours you have total. Then we have a communication log, so you can talk, to, uh, put the date, the person you talked to, the method you used, email, phone, carrier pigeon, whatever, um, and some notes about the conversation. So obviously this isn't going to be a detailed place to put notes, but there is some notebook paper right behind it a couple pages later, so you can add more notes if you need to, but this is just a quick reminder, a jot down of when you spoke to a principal, a parent, a vendor, a advertiser, whatever it may be, you have a record of when you talk to them and how you talk to them because I don't know about you, but I have so many plates spinning in the air, I don't remember when I talked to my mom last, so writing this down is super helpful. 
All right, then on the left side, we have a recommendation letter tracker. This is mostly geared towards high school, but sometimes middle school also, they need recommendation letters for other programs or things they might be going into. And so it gives you a place to put when their due date is, who is the student that requested it. I always have them turn in a resume to me. It would just kind of help me personalize the letter. Um, even if they don't have a formal resume, they can turn in like a list of accomplishments or activities and that's totally fine. And then if I have written it and if I have sent it. A lot of times I would just send it to the student and then they would send it. Um, and then they also have a copy of it for the future. But sometimes I had to go in and log in to different college uh, portals and submit it myself. So I wanted to make sure that I sent it by the due date. Then we have a quick reference section. So here we have all the major journalism organizations as well as state organizations on the website. And so uh, they also have events that they host every year. And so this is just a really quick overview. They do a lot more than what's listed here, but I just wanted to highlight what the organizations are, how to join them, and how to find out more information. All right, moving along in the quick reference section, we have a quick guide to photography. So on this left side, we have some definitions. These are very, very basic, but they're perfect if you are maybe coming from like the English side of journalism and you know how to write and how to teach writing, but you don't necessarily know photography, this is a great place to start. It also has a photography checklist that you can photocopy and laminate and throw in your camera bags. And this helps guide the photographer of what their expectations are while they're at an event. You can also customize this if you'd like, you know, make your own version, that kind of thing, but it's a good starting place. Then, uh, if you are just getting started with photography, you might need some help with how to grade it. This is one of the most common questions we have that's asked all the time is how do I grade photography? I either have so many kids going out and shooting or I, I just don't even know how to, how to quantify it. If they did the event and they tried but their photos are bad, like does that affect their grade? Um, and so this is a good starting point again, like you can, you can edit this to your liking. Um, and I'm of the belief that if the student tried and if they're trying to learn but their photos aren't great, they can redeem that grade with another assignment um, and show that they've learned or explain what their thought process was and stuff. We don't want these grades, especially in an extracurricular kind of activity like yearbook. Like they're doing a lot of work and the grades are, you know, the, the indicator of their success and we don't want to discourage them by giving them bad grades if they are trying. So that's just my personal belief, but there is a rubric there if you want to use it as a starting point or you can, again, photocopy it and use it in your classroom. Then we have a quick guide to creating publications content. This goes over captions, stories, quotes, interviewing, and photojournalism in a really quick way. It's just a one pager. I definitely, I always add this into my students um, staff manuals and make sure that they know all this stuff. If they know this stuff, they are going to do pretty well. Obviously there's more to it than this, but they will know how to write a caption. They will understand what we're going for for photography. Um, design isn't covered here, so that's a big part of it, but you know, it's a good, again, starting place. Blank piece of paper because we wanted lots of note space. Then we have um, our last pages, I think, yeah, in our quick reference section, we have some computer shortcuts from InDesign and Photoshop, as well as just general computer shortcuts. Then we have a list of the most popular journalism movies that are typically played in journalism classrooms. Super helpful if you have a substitute or you're out for a couple of days on a field trip or you're at a convention and you have other classes, you can have them watch something journalism related. And then we have a couple of team building ideas. So this one is one of my favorite pages. I think it's super, super important and that was one thing that I really like worked hard on with my staff is always building a culture where everyone feels welcome and it feels like a family and creating a good publication kind of comes out of that and so team building and taking that time to really get to know each other at the beginning of the year super important um, and it makes it easier when you get to that like heavier deadline season because everyone feels like they're already part of the same team so this is um, just a couple ideas but taking the time to do the team building activities is really, really, really worth it. All right, a couple more meeting notes, and then we have some blank pages, blind pages, and then the dot grid as well. And then we get into the advising section. So this is all things that pertain specifically to advising student publications. So things like planning a back to school boot camp. Again, this isn't the boot camp planned for you, but it's a good checklist to, of things that you might need to cover or not cover with your staff. Look at this and see where your students are at. Do they need to know 
you know, photography. If they're pretty good on photography, maybe you need to focus on writing. Maybe they're great at that and you really need to focus on increasing your design. And so, you know, this gives you a good kind of overview of things that you can have your students work through at the beginning of the year to make sure that they have a good understanding of all the elements of creating a student publication that they need. I also like to point out that I always have my editors teach this. So the people that are returning and they've been on staff before, if you have it, if you have a middle school, maybe they're all new, but if you have returning staff members who are editors, this is a great opportunity at the beginning of the year for them to establish their authority, practice teaching their peers, you know, get some, it's kind of a refresher for them to be able to put together a presentation, then they have to present it. Um, so I always think it's a really good idea to have your editors lead this boot camp as much as you can, of course, with your guidance though. All right, then we have some tips about how to travel with students. And so things like how to plan the trip, how to gather information with parents, um, how to communicate all these things that you need to communicate with parents and administration, and then all of this information kind of put into a little clean checklist for you. After travel, we have a trip tracker, and so this is where you can put the student's name, who their requested roommate is, if they're going to be participating in a contest and which one, what their room number is, their shirt size for the trip, that's super important because we always do a, a matching shirt for every trip, and then if they are, have medications, yes or no, I always had to carry medications with me, and so I need to know which kids I'm holding on to, and then if they've turned in their permission slip, their info sheet, their deposit's been paid, and if it's been paid in full. Um, this permission slip and the info sheet I talk more about on this page. So if you're, you need information about that, there is some resources there for you. I think that if you're going on one trip, then definitely use this. If you're going on multiple, copy this whole thing and use it over and over again because um, each trip's going to have a different roster and stuff like that. All right, then we have our end of the year goodies. So we have planning yearbook distribution and planning the banquet. Um, the yearbook distribution is focused on heavily because it's the yearbook, there's a lot of them, they're heavy, um, it's really highly anticipated, all that sort of stuff, but this stuff also applies to newspaper distribution, but probably just on a smaller scale because you know it's done more often. Um, and then the banquet is obviously just the most fun to get to celebrate everything that went on throughout the year, just some things to think about, how to structure your uh, banquet, things to do as part of it, the quill and scroll ind induction, um, celebration, you know, celebrating your seniors, your editors, stuff like that. All right, then we have um, some publication specifics. And so you, especially if you are a new yearbook advisor, this is gonna be helpful, but it's just some things to think through with your rep. And so what the deadlines are, the number of pages, how often you publish the newspaper, um, any sort of things you need to know about the software, how it's proofed, it has their contact info again. Um, again, this is probably not going to be very helpful to you as the advisor um, once you get the hang of things, but to someone that's stepping in, uh, substitute or you know I've had to kind of step in as pseudo advisor for uh, another uh, teacher whose, te whose baby decided to come a little bit earlier than anticipated and the yearbook wasn't done and so I was able to step in and see kind of where they were at with deadlines uh, and that can be super helpful and it's just good to kind of fill out and like make sure it's there. All right, then some reference, we have a anatomy of a layout. And so this takes you through all the different parts of the layout and how you can um, design the page when it's from scratch. And so this is really helpful, especially brand new advisors learning terminology, but also something you can give your students as they learn terminology as well. All right, then we have our roadmap. Again, probably more helpful for brand new advisors who are learning the ropes. But this walks you through seven steps of creating a student publication and being an advisor. And uh, unfortunately, it's not linear, so it's not like you're gonna go through and check all these things off, and then you're gonna go through this and check all these off, and then to here. Um, these, some of these are happening simultaneously while you're preparing for the year, you're also planning, and then you're also starting to promote before you even get to production. But once you're producing, you're still promoting. So there's lots of overlap, but it gives you a good checklist of things to think through if you have it already. 
All right, then we have our yearbook sales tracker. And so this gives you a, a little kind of thermometer from zero sales to 100%. So you put your total goal right here. Always try to increase your yearbook sales year over year, just a little bit, just to push yourself a little bit outside of your comfort zone. Don't just rely on just making whatever you sold last year. You wanna grow your program. More yearbook sales means more equipment, more workshops, that kind of thing. So um, always set your goal a little bit higher than what you sold last year and then break that down by percentage and then try to give your staff some rewards along the way. Even if they're really, really small, they get a gold star sticker if they get 10%. Great. All the way up until maybe a pizza party or something even better than that. Um, you don't have to necessarily give a reward all the way, you know, at every step, but if you can build them into the milestones, then that can be really motivating for your staff to kind of promote those sales. Similarly with sales, the next page is an activity account budget tracker. So at the beginning of the year, um, based on you know the final yearbook invoice from the previous year, the number of ads sold, we always had some money left over um, and then we would buy equipment with it. And so this is a good way to track whatever you purchased throughout the year because our trips also came out of that fund. And so whatever the date is, the description of the transaction, the amount, and then the balance is just a good thing to keep track of because while your finance officer or finance clerk probably does do this I like to have a copy as well because there was a couple of times that things were inaccurately charged to our account and we ended up having money that we had to go track down so I had record of it and it was really easy because of that all right then we have our yearbook ladder so this is um, by signature so you see 1 through 16 17 through 32 here all the way to 128 and then we have a couple of spreads of that and then the very last spread is blank so we have some schools that have really gigantic books so it's numbered all the way until 384 but if your book is bigger than that then you can fill it out here if your book is bigger than this then you can photocopy this and fill that out as well and just add those pages right into here then we have a newspaper space planner. So this one's pretty basic and I would recommend photocopying it or using those little tiny sticky notes to plan out your space in this uh, grid. But this is just to give you a, a template for how to plan out your content, your ads, your table of contents in your school newspaper uh, magazine style. Uh, this is mostly meant for magazine because it is two page spreads, but you, know, you could adapt this also for more of a tabloid uh, format. All right, then we have a bunch of spreads of a marketing calendar. And so this is really interesting. So I'll zoom in just, I'll just hold it up a little bit. But it gives you a space to write down the event name and then it has two spots for what I call channels. And so this is what professional marketers do when they are planning out their content for whatever it is they're promoting. And so what I would do is take that annual calendar from the earlier in the year where you have the district calendar, the campus calendar, all the school events that you could ever think of and put those into here on the dates that they happen and then you'll know okay well homecoming is happening September 14th through 18th so I'm going to promote uh, you know spirit days the week before and on channel one which is going to be maybe social media channel two might be um, you know the morning announcements and you can kind of set that you know based on the event it doesn't have to be all the way down the column and so what I'll do is I'll put like IG um, carousel and that makes that lets my students know that they need to create an IG carousel about the spirit days and it's going to be posted on the 13th or whatever um, and so this is a really good activity to do with your staff um, as the beginning of the year is go through and have them plan out every single month maybe not the whole year at the beginning but at least like a month at a time and then they can break it down and be like who's going to do what post who's going to create what content who's going to promote what um, and it's not just social media but posters and promoting your yearbook sales yard signs each one of those different things is a marketing channel and so that's it gives you at least two opportunities to market uh, each for each day of course throughout the whole month you can use a bunch of different channels um, but we wanted to give space for promotion in two different ways uh, for each day that you can market your book obviously you don't market your book and your program obviously you don't have to fill out something for every single day um, there's weekends in here there's school holidays but you want to um, have the space to plan all that out so there's one page for every single month Let's get past. Okay, then we have some more meeting notes pages, the line pages, of course, and then we have 
our dot grid and then we get into the actual planner itself so enjoy every moment as you walk into the calendar section so first with each uh, month we have a month view so this is a great place for you to plan overall stuff before you get to that week um, and so it's just very basic Sunday through Saturday there's a spot for notes and then you'll notice throughout all the calendar pages there are quotes from advisors just like you that um, have advice or words of wisdom to share with you as you get through that part in the school year some of them are just generally good advice but a lot of them pertain to that particular time in the school year so right now this is August the beginning of the school year um, and this is a quote from Jen Bladen that says choose no more than three things to tackle this year maybe you have a list of 239 things you want to change too bad choose one two or three then stick to them super good advice I definitely agree I think that sometimes we can look at award-winning programs or award-winning books or we look at advisors that just seemingly have it all together and it can be like um, it can feel like a mountain to try and um, accomplish all these things that you want to improve on every year over year but honestly I would say pick like one or two things to focus on improving do those and do them really well and then worry about the rest later all right, so then we have the weekly spreads. And so there are seven sections across, so it will can accommodate for up to seven subjects or seven class periods. Um, and then there are Monday through Friday here, but teachers also exist on the weekends. And so if you wanna use this planner just for journal and stuff, then ignore those boxes entirely. If you're using this as more of a life planner and you're putting your personal things as well as your school things in here, then celebrate those weekends and live them up. Um, there is a section on the left side to get stuff done. I'm a really big believer in writing to-do lists and so this gives you a spot to do it. Hopefully you never have this many things to do in one week but it'd be like that sometimes so I wanted to give you the space to do so. There's also some little dot grids here and space, more space to take notes. Um, I have had some feedback already come back and say that they actually need eight boxes across because they teach eight periods through a block schedule um, and so there will be a survey that goes out in the next couple of months. I want to give you guys time to use the planners and, and see what works, see what doesn't um, and then give me some feedback about next year's so um, you know if you agree or if that's maybe too many or too little you know I would like to know what you guys need because we can obviously make changes and make it as best um, for you guys as possible um, you'll notice there's also a little tiny circle down here at the bottom that says check for attendance uh, this is uh, something that was highly requested and also I completely wanted because I always 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 forget to take attendance like always I do have to take attendance for every single class period so you know that's another thing but I could do it all at one time at the end of the day and so that was just a reminder to me to check off did I take attendance or not and I actually would just leave my planner on my desk and um, leave it open to this so I can see my plans for the whole week as I move through it um, and then I would just check that off every single day there's also some space underneath um, by this uh, date box to put like all day events things like pep rally schedule schedule a schedule b whatever it may be um, and so that gives you lots of space to take notes for all day stuff as well as each class period or each section that you teach Okay, one more thing that I wanted to point out before we move on is I've already received some feedback that they thought that planner tabs would be really helpful and I totally agree. I have tabs in my own planner and I think that it is really helpful because you're, you're going to lose your place where you are in here and even though you have the bookmark, you might want a couple of things as you flip back. You have to kind of figure out what month you're in and that can be kind of annoying. So um, there are going to be places for tabs. I put this little indicator here so you can put a tab over it so you know the space um, but I do want to get tabs I think in the future um, that you can add in yourself so they're optional but I think that, that would be a great addition because I get lost in it as well <laughs> so I think that was, that's a great idea all right so at the end of each month we have another goal setting worksheet and it might seem like a little bit of overkill because there's goals all over this thing but I really believe in it that wholeheartedly that when you have a time when you set goals you're more likely to achieve the goals and then also when you take time to reflect on the past month 
and you look at what did you accomplish, what went well, what didn't go so great that you can improve on, what are you grateful for, what are things that you want to start doing, continue doing, or stop doing, what's the summary, the overall rating, the, giving that yourself and that your brain that time to decompress the month lets you go into the next month clear-minded and ready to succeed and you know whether or not you use this entirely you might use parts of it or whatever I really thought it was important to again speak to and, and cater to the advisor as a whole person and not just as a teacher who makes the yearbook or newspaper so I love this page personally but I would love to know your thoughts on it all right, then in between each month spread, we also have a blank notebook paper uh, page. Again, we put these in as often as we possibly could. All right, then when you get to the very back of the planner, you have your last goal setting worksheet, and then you have a notebook paper just like every month. Then we wrap up and we kind of start planning for next year. So there's another annual planning calendar here, and this is for 2023. 2024 and it gives you an opportunity to write down any sort of dates you might have already things you want to remember things to remind yourself of what to do at certain times next year it's a good place to kind of start prepping for next year's planner and then there's a spot for things that went well this year and things to change next year this is kind of a running list of things that I would take all year long and so it's really good for when you start with your planner next year and starting to change things and plan your staff manual and plan how things are going to go. You already have a list here and there's a place to put it instead of having 8,000 sticky notes all over like I once had <laughs> because that's just where my brain works. Uh, then we have a bunch of Nova paper in the back. Again, lots of more space to take notes. We have some dot grid space. And then we have our final coloring sheets, positive vibes only, duh. We have a couple of those, and then we have the very last page. So with that, I just wanted to say a big thank you to these people on this page. Um, Michaela Wynn was my design assistant. She helped me lay out all the calendar pages. And then this whole thing was inspired by the wonderful Samantha Jo Berry. If you're familiar with her, then you know that she is amazing. Um, she encouraged me to actually put this together and put it, bring it into fruition. She had some great ideas for what goes inside of it. Um, and this, for a long time, felt like a really big project that I never really thought would happen and um, she is the one that encouraged me to actually go for it and make it happen so big thanks to her this literally wouldn't have been in existence if it wasn't for her at least not yet <laughs> that is it I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the inside of the first ever organized advisor planner I would love to know your feedback whether you bought one or not tell me what your thoughts are on the pages inside what you think is helpful what you think you won't use what you think you will use the good the bad the ugly we want to hear it all because whether we missed a mark on something or we made something awesome we want to make next year's better and your feedback makes that happen so uh, we'd love to hear from you whether you give us feedback continually through the year or you wait a couple of months see what works for you see what doesn't and then give us feedback either way is fine with me um, but I'd love to hear from you and see what you thought so thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting Organized Advisor thank you for pre-ordering your planner if you still want one I have a couple available and if you have any questions at all please reach out everything we do at Organized Advisor comes directly directly from advisor requests so quite literally your wish is my command uh, I don't have all the answers personally but I have a wonderful team of other advisors around the country that do probably have all the answers so if you ever need anything at all please don't hesitate to reach out we will get you what you need all right thanks for watching bye